Today, the country laid to rest the 17th Prime Minister of Canada, John Turner. In a state funeral that was diminished by the pandemic, Canadians watched. John Turner's flag-draped casket was carried into Toronto St. Michael's Cathedral Basilica for a full state funeral. The crowd limited to just 170 people because of COVID-19. Over his political career, Mr. Turner represented three provinces as a Liberal Member of Parliament and served as Prime Minister for 79 days in 1984. It hardly defines his decades-long service. He died September 19th at his home. He was 91. His daughter, Elizabeth Turner, says some of her fondest memories of her father were spending time in the Canadian wilderness and surrounded by family. I have memories of Dad standing over the fire at the campsite, cooking dinner with a head net to protect him from the voracious black flies, swimming in the frigid waters of the Great Slave Lake, the Burnside and the Hanbury Rivers, gazing out at the tundra as the sun set. It was in those moments that he was truly happy and at peace. He loved those trips, even if we woke at 5 a.m. to a snowstorm, lifting our tents off the ground. There were tributes to the man's well-known achievements as justice minister. He defended decriminalizing homosexuality or his epic debates on free trade with Brian Mulroney. John Turner was from a time when privilege was seen as a responsibility to serve the public. And losses, and Mr. Turner had many of those, simply meant perseverance, not surrender. John Turner had guts, he had a sense of purpose and duty, what we used to call character. He was, to paraphrase the great speech by Teddy Roosevelt, a man in the arena. He was a doer of deeds, who strives valiantly, who errs, who knows great enthusiasms, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who knows the triumph of high achievement, but when he fails, at least he fails daring greatly. John Turner was not a timid soul, John Turner dared greatly, and that's what we remember of his decades of service to this country. May he rest in peace, and our thoughts are with his family. To talk more about the man he knew so well and he served with, we turn now to the former Foreign Affairs Minister of Canada, Lloyd Axworthy, he joins us from Winnipeg. Mr. Axworthy, mm -hmm. I am obviously sorry for your loss. He was a great man. Um, on a day like this, what memory do you have of your friend John Turner? Well, uh, Evan, first off, uh your tribute to him is really very fine, and I, I think we all appreciate uh, those words because uh, John was an exceptional Canadian, and it's interesting that today is a day where uh, the country can pause for a while and uh, see so much of what is good about Canada, the values and the commitments and constructive public life, good government. These are the things that really help define us, and I think... Uh, the tributes that came in and the eulogies and the Prime Minister's remarks all helped to sort of put into proper uh, perspective just how important uh, his legacy is. You know the old saying, you have to look backward to go forward. Well, I think uh, looking back at John's career and his personality and his friendships is a, is a, is a nice little sort of a, a compass for Canadians to follow. Um, and I think uh, we all have so many comments to make, and uh, uh, I guess I would start out with the one that I went to work for John uh, in 1967 as a special assistant when he was consumer and corporate affairs minister. People don't talk about that experience much, but he brought in one of the most significant uh, areas of social legislation because he opened up the whole pharmaceutical industry to geriatric manufacturers, which is substantially lower drug costs uh, over the last several decades. And so uh, he asked me at the time to go up and find out what Canadians thought about that because we were being pushed back inside officialdom and inside from some of the big uh, pharma companies. And I came back and said, John, you're on the right track. And he said, well, we're going to go for it. And he did, and he passed it. And uh, he took a risk because he was a member of parliament from the Montreal area. But nevertheless, he felt it was the right thing to do. Thank you, Reverend Curtis. Yeah. Politicians don't often uh, take the kind of risks. Uh, look, people sometimes define him as the 79 days as the prime minister. It, it, it's almost like a blip in, and it was a moment, an important moment, but a yeah. blip in a decades-long service. What, mm -hmm. what might politicians, and you and I know Mr. Axworthy, we're living in a time of deep cynicism. 
What might politicians and people learn today, as you say, as we look through the windshield, not the rearview mirror from John Turner? Well, I think we have to learn is that first, uh, you have to have some basic sense of, uh, of value of what you believe in. And you know, we've heard that today, John really believed fundamentally in parliamentary democracy. I mean, he was, he really believed that the crucible for Canadian government lies in parliament, which is the place in which people can elect representatives to speak on their behalf, not to be simply sort of handmaidens, not to simply be sort of uh, a watchdog, to be actually be engaged in developing ideas, representing interest, and trying to bring the country together from all its regions and, and to overcome divisions of classes. I always liked the fact that he said he was a reformer, that he was prepared to look at making changes. And I guess that's where we're at now in this, the period you described, this kind of existential risk that we're now facing with epidemics and climate and, and the kind of conflicts that are going on. I think what we're discovering is that we're going to have to really chart a new navigation route for ourselves. And it doesn't hurt to go back and kind of look at the sort of pathway that was set by people like John Turner. Yeah, I, I like how today some of the tributes to him were uh, talking about the future, which I think he, he would like. I will say this about John Turner, and, and you know this better than I do because you've been a politician. Uh, sometimes you, the, the people in the other parties are your opponents and the people inside your own party are your enemies. Man, he had scars from both sides, internal and, mm. and external. What I just liked is he persevered. And I think that's a quality that I don't think people understand that what it takes to persevere right. in politics when you have all those wounds. Do, do, do you, Mr. Axworth? It's tough, but you go on. Well, I think particularly because you, you think it's part of your public responsibility when you've been elected. He always believed that magic moment when uh, thousands of people put a ballot in the box and elect a member of parliament or a legislature or a city council really is a kind of uh, a transformative experience. And that you, therefore, you simply can't treat it sort of as an offhand uh, transaction. It's something that really endows you with a re responsibility. And I might be allowed, uh, Evan, I thought, you know, the tributes that came in, we heard from uh, former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. What we have to remember in the 1988 election, the, John Turner uh, initiated a major debate on whether the particular free trade agreement that had been negotiated was good for Canada. He knew that that was not going to be necessarily a big winner. The country was split on it. And he knew there was a lot of very powerful economic interests uh, against his position. But I remember him saying to me, I was his trade critic in opposition at the time, that we've got to do the right thing for Canada. And we fought it out, and he actually almost came close to winning 88 until there was a huge surge of advertising that overcame him. But that was a kind of, you know, John didn't think that this was something that he had to kind of cut the cloth uh, yeah. simply to suit the times. He said, look, this is important for this country. Yeah, it was... Uh Great to, to have known him. I met him a number of times. He always, he had the fight in his eyes right to the end and um, mm. win or lose. I have, you know, we cover politics for a living here and I always say whatever flag you carry, red, blue, orange, green, we'll have the highest respect for people who serve and step into the arena like you did. Uh, John Turner was 91. I really appreciate your tribute, Mr. Oxworthy. Thank you so much. An important day and I, and I appreciate you having you on the program very much. Evan, thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure.